The Detroit Pistons are coming off a heartbreaking loss to the Charlotte Hornets. They're sitting at 3-6. and six. Pistons fans should be feeling extremely excited for their future because of two players and how they played. We'll talk about that in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Let's go. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. For usual, I am your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button over at the YouTube channel or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. Also, today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Download the app today and use code Locked NBA to win $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Price Picks run your game. Also, make sure to go over to LockedOnDaily.com and type in your email to get the Locked On Pistons daily newsletter along with your Locked On Pistons podcast. We are currently ranked ninth with the most amount of subscribers at the Locked On Network with the newsletters. We deserve to be top five. We are a top five community at Locked On Network in the Locked On NBA channel. So go ahead and help us show that. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button over, type in your email, and showcase just how big and supportive our Locked On Pistons community truly is. I really would appreciate you guys. I have some other things I got to tell you guys about, but you guys will hear about that a little bit later. Um, so look, we're going to be talking about in today's podcast, there's a certain veteran that has to be better. We'll break that down. And also we'll preview the Pistons' upcoming game against the Atlanta Hawks. But... I want to talk about two players that really all it, they're really the only players that should let me not say the only players that should matter, but they, they it's close to that. Um, Kay Cunningham and Jay and Ivy. The Pistons are sitting at three and six on the season. They are coming off a very heartbreaking loss to the Charlotte Hornets, and because of that loss, there is a lot of negativity now coming out in the Pistons community when discussing the Pistons and when discussing a Kay Cunningham. But, and I understand that because, I, like I said in the last episode, it was, it was an absolutely horrid and unacceptable loss. So I get all of that. However, there's been nine games played, and we can't let one game cloud our entire thought process. It was a tough loss, a loss you can't have happen. However, there's been nine games, and through these nine games so far, again, you guys know I like to do final you know reviews over 20 games, so I look at it in quarter. So we're going to wait till then until I go out like, you know, season review so far or whatever, you know. Um, but through nine games, Kay Cunningham and Jay and Ivy should should be providing for Pistons fans a sense of comfort, a sense of hope. Because the question heading into this year, the number one question was by everyone, can Jay and Ivy not only, or Jay and Ivy and Kay Cunningham not only fit together, but can they thrive together? Can they make each other better playing on the floor together? That was the number one question. And they are hitting that question out of the park. Home run. They have been excellent together. They have been playing extremely well off of each other. And they both look vastly improved this upcoming season, or this uh, current season through nine games. Again, it's only nine games, but they both look incredible together. Cade's averaging 23 points, 7.7 assists, 6.9 rebounds, has around a 55 true shooting percentage. We've just watched them have two back-to-back triple-doubles. The first Piston to do that since Grant Hill, which I think is a pretty big deal. And then you've got Jay and Ivey, who is averaging around 19.8 points a game. Basically 20 points a game here. 4.4 rebounds, 3.8 assists. He's shooting 47% from the field, 41% from deep. And he has a true shooting percentage so far of around 57%. So... Both of these guys, those are the Pistons' main guys right now. You, There was an argument that I would have been making in the offseason, and if he was healthy, I, would, I, I probably would be making that argument, that Asar is just as important in some of those guys. Um, but without Asar on the floor, I don't know if there's... There's no one else that's as important as those two guys figuring out and whether they can play together. And they have looked excellent together. Not only are they playing really good individually, there's one thing for both of them that I really like. I really would like it if they snapped out of in a certain area. Number one, the first area for me is Cade. Cade's shooting 77% from free throw line uh, this year. He needs to get out of that. We've seen Cade for three years be, what, an 85, 86 
free throw shooter. We saw him shoot 87% last year. He's a good free throw shooter in college. He's just in a bit of a slump uh, over the first nine games, really over the last few games. Um, he had a 2 of 5 performance that really shrunk him. That was crazy against the Lakers. But I, he has to start hitting regularly his free throws like he was um, throughout the majority of his career. He's missed, I believe, all of the technical foul free throws, which has just been crazy. I don't know what's going on with that. Cade's got to snap out of that. And Jay and Ivey, despite the fact that he's shooting well from beyond the arc, I still would love to see him finish a little better around the rim, and he's capable of that. So there's two areas I would love to see both of them get better at, and they still need to improve. There's other stuff that they need to improve on, but obviously those two, there's two things that – if you ask me immediately, those are the first two things that jumped to my mind. That like, yeah, they look great, but I, I really would like it if they snapped out of this. Um, despite that, though, not only do their individual numbers support this, the the on off numbers support this. And this is something I really want. We'll probably dive even further into in our second segment. Uh, but when Jane Ivy and Kay Cunningham are on the floor together, they've played so far 197 minutes together. In those 197 minutes. The Detroit Pistons have a positive net rating when they're on the floor. I'll say it again. And you guys will understand why this is a big deal in a second. But when the Pistons have Cade and Ivy on the floor, for those entire 197 minutes, they are outscoring the opponent per 100 possessions. They have a net rating of plus 0.06. So just barely, just barely outscoring teams, but they are. And that wasn't the case the last few years. And that's a lot of minutes already through the first nine games of the year. When one of them is off the floor, though, completely sinks. The team sinks. Cade without Jay and Ivy, they have a minus 7.08 net rating. The offense with Cade without Ivy drops to 105.08 uh, offense rating per 100 possessions. Jay and Ivy without Cade drops even further to 103.83 offensive rating. They have a net rating of minus 16.07. So when you take Jay and Ivy off the floor, the Pistons are losing with just Cade on the floor. When you take Cade off the floor, they're losing badly without Jay, with just Jay and Ivy on the floor. Those two guys have been great together, and the Pistons look good when they're both on the floor. When you take one of them off, they, they instantly start losing. So I want everyone to understand that, yes, was this last loss heartbreaking? Yeah, okay, like you can't have that type of loss, and no one's excusing it. Cade can't go 1 of 12 after starting... You know, I think he was 1 of 12 in the second half. He started off 6 of 8. I believe he went 3 of 13, 14 after that. That's absolutely unacceptable. He can't do that. He, he can't do that. I think he contributed in other places despite that. But shoot, you cannot have that type of inefficiency in the middle quarters. Can't happen. Unacceptable. Despite that, the biggest question is being answered for everybody. The Pistons' two main guys that they're trying to build around look great together. They both look really good individually this upcoming year. I saw that they're both, I believe, in the top six when it comes to most improved odds right now. So, like, they're both looking really good. And they both can be even better. Like I said, Cade makes more a couple more free throws. He's averaging probably 24 a game. Much more efficient. He's probably hovering around like a 56, 57, two shooting percentage. If Jane Ivy can finish just a little better around the rim, I think some of it has to do with some of the shots he's taking around the rim. Take take away some of those attempts, turn those into maybe floaters or kickouts, and also just improve a little bit more around the rim. His efficiency also is going like they can still get even better. I expect them both to get even better as the year goes on. But they are answering that question right now. They look really good, and the Pistons are winning their minutes. When they are on the floor, they're winning their minutes. The other side I want to bring out to you guys. Is that so far through nine games, listen to this. This is this is this should be impressive for Pistons fans. Through nine games, the Detroit Pistons ranked 16th in the NBA net rating. This is a team last year that was the worst team in the NBA. This is a team last year, I believe, was 29th or 30th. They were either last or second to last in net rating. They were getting blitzed last year. Despite the fact that they are three and six. They have a net rating of minus 2.8. That's right ahead of Indiana's net rating. That's ahead of the Lakers' net rating. That's ahead of the Hawks' rate net rating. That's ahead of the Orlando Magic's net rating. Again, just nine games, but through nine games, the Detroit Pistons have been competitive. They have been about a league average basketball team, and it's because of how well JB has them performing defensively. They have currently the 16th ranked defense uh, in the NBA. If I'm hold on, let me make sure it hasn't changed. Um, 13th, actually. They rose to 13th. They have the 13th ranked defense right now through three games. However, their offense is really struggling. They are 24th in the NBA. You may be asking why that is. Well, there's two reasons for this. 
One, when Cade Cunningham and Jane Ivey, one of those guys, leave the floor, if you've watched these games, and I, the numbers kind of bear it out more when Cade leaves the floor because he's been more of their de facto point guard. He's more of a floor general. But even when uh, Kate, Jane Ivey leaves Cade, they're still getting blitzed by seven points. The reason why is when one of those guys leave, they are the only creators on the floor. The only guys on the floor that are capable of creating an advantage for their team. They're the only players on the floor that can make consistent driving kicks. They're the only guys on the floor who can, you know, that, that defenses are really afraid of with the ball in their hands. So it puts all the pressure on them. The defenses can just strictly focus on them, put all the attention on them. And I think both of them have been doing a fine job driving and kicking. Cade, two straight triple doubles. I think Cade's been tremendous playmaking. Um, and la- yesterday he cut down the turnover. He only had two turnovers. I think he's getting better with that. But I think they've both been fine playmaking. So, But they don't have another creator. They need... That's probably the next step for this team. They need another creator on this team. So when Cade or Ivy leave the floor, it's not all on one of those guys and defenses can just key on them. When the defenses can just key on them, it, it, they, they, they're getting blitzed. They're absolutely getting blitzed. So that's one, that's one reason. The other reason is their teammates are allowing them to be blitzed when one of them comes off the floor. They need their teammates to play better. They're not right now, and that's stopping what is an uh, offensive heavy, um, an offensive heavy roster. That's what's making it a bottom ten offensive team right now. It's not Cade. It's not Jay and Ivy. It's all of their teammates. Cade and Ivy is what's keeping this team a twenty third, twenty fourth ranked offense. Without them, they'd be even lower. They need their teammates to show up and start playing a little better offensively. JB's getting the best out of them. I can't believe how much he's getting out of them defensively. However, this is supposed to be an offensive roster with spacing, shooting, and, and secondary scoring. And they're not getting that from anyone outside of Cade and Ivy. And that's why an offensive roster is falling to 23rd in the NBA. If you are getting what you expected out of these guys offensively, along with what JB is getting out of them defensively, they would be, what, 6-3, and 5-4? and four? Easily. Easily. So they need their teammates to step up. But Cade and Ivy... They're answering every single question. They're answering every single question. They're playing well together. They're carrying this team offensively. They're both giving the best defensive effort of their career. And the numbers support this. They look really good together on the floor. That right there should give Pistons fans a level of comfort right now and moving forward because that was the biggest question. question. If that question is answered, everything else is so much easier. Everything else will be so much easier for this team at the trade deadline, in the offseason, throughout the everything is going to be simple. If your two main guys, your backcourt is legitimately good enough to build around. And it's looking like they're proving that to be the case. So let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kooky Hill. How you guys feel about Caden Ivy so far into this year? Does this give you guys a level of comfort or is there still questions that you have about this tandem? But when we come back, I was mentioning how their teammates need to be better. One of the players that absolutely... Have to be better, Tobias Harris. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less than on at least two players for a shot up to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on prize picks. Again, you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is the best way to get on the action on sports in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Prize picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy so that your lineups stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, prize picks keeps your lineup alive, which is absolutely big time with anyone who engages in this. Everyone knows that is absolutely big time. That's why Price Picks is the absolute best to me. It saves me all the time. Price Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. Price Picks first through members first, so all withdrawals are safe, fast, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 seconds. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks also offers weekly promotions. That can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, prize picks, discounts, select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. Go check out 
prize picks today. Again, you can pick more or less than on at least two players for a shot to win up 100 times your cash. Run your game with prize picks. Now, I got to tell you guys about another one of our sponsors, FanDuel. A FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel. Dot com. Never waste the hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first list of every single day. We are free to available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. I do want to let you guys know, I know I told you guys to go ahead over to my personal YouTube channel, subscribe there, and a lot of you guys have. I appreciate the support. We can get even more people over there. That would be another great way to help support me. Um, But I haven't posted a video in about a week. This has been a crazy, this has been a lot more of a busier time than I originally thought. I've been extremely busy with work and then trying to do the podcast. Extremely busy. I promise we're going to get a lot more content coming soon. I just need to get some free time. I, it's extremely busy right now, but go over to my YouTube, cha- YouTube channel, at Kukil. Subscribe over there and be ready for the film breakdowns coming. They'll be coming soon. Just really busy right now. Also, subscribe to our Locked On Pistons Insiders program. Text the number 313-914-6528. You can see that at the bottom of the screen. If you text that number and subscribe to, uh, monthly, you also will be able to text with me one-on-one. You'll be able to get... Piston news, Piston rumors, anything I'm hearing, any Pistons content, anything I'm seeing related to the Detroit Pistons will be sent directly to your phone. You can also text with me one-on-one. I'll have live Q&As. I'll have trivia. And also, you can just get to know me or get I can get to know you guys a little better as well. Just text me literally right on your phone. You go over here and do that um, at the Insiders Program. Text that number. I really would appreciate it. Also, you guys can subscribe to Locked On Pistons Daily's newsletter at LockedOnDaily.com. All those ways are great ways to support the podcast and support me. I appreciate all of you guys. So like I mentioned earlier, the Detroit Pistons are actually 13th in the league in defensive rating. However, offensively, they're in the bottom 10. And this is supposed to be an offensive heavy roster all offseason. And I think if you look at this team, if you watch the games, honestly, I'm shocked. I don't know how the Pistons or JB's been able to get the 13th ranked defense out of them. I... I I don't know how he's been able to do it. They quite literally are guarding wings with 6'5 players, um, especially once K gets into foul trouble, um, which he has a few times to start of the year. They have to move him off of like the primary wings. I, I'm shocked that they've been able, that, that JB's been able to get that out of them, but he has. So if I told you before the year that JB was able to get the 13th ranked defense out of this team, you probably would be saying to me, Oh, this team must be pretty damn good then because the offense should be fine. Well, the offense has not been fine. The offense has been a bottom 10 unit to start this year. And why is that? Is it because of Cade? No. Is it because of Jane Ivey? No. It is because the Pistons veterans who they have acquired and, it's, and were supposed to be the main shooters and spacers on this team, those guys, those guys that they acquired are not doing what they expected them to do. If those guys were showing up, if those guys were playing well, this team would have at least six wins. They, they easily, in my, from the games I've watched, if those guys all were playing well, along with how they're playing defensively, along with the improvements Caden and Ivy have made, they would easily be six and four. Easily, I think, at, at least. Not, wait, three and six. No, six and three. I'm sorry, not six and four. Six and three. Easily. So I'm going to focus here on Tobias in a second. Because I think he's the one that they desperately need. But the Detroit Pistons currently are ranked 22nd in the NBA in three-point percentage. They're behind teams like the Los Angeles Lakers. Who don't take a lot of threes. Don't have that great of shooting on the team. They're behind teams like that. They're just barely ahead of the Toronto Raptors at 33.3. The Pistons are 33.4. That, that is not where that needs to be. It's going to be around there. The Pistons are not going to win too many games. 
it's going to be hard to win a lot of games with the Pistons shooting like that. To give you an example, or to go off of last year, worst year in Pistons history, they were 26th in the NBA. So they've went from 26th to 23rd. That's nowhere near enough with the amount of resources the Pistons put into that. The Pistons, all of their offseason acquisitions, all of their resources were put into spacing and shooting. Tim Hardaway Jr., Tobias Harris, Malik Beasley, Simone Fontecchio, quite literally all of their resources this offseason went into addressing shooting. Not for a 2% increase from 31 to 33. Not to go from t- bottom 5 to bottom 7. Like, that's not, that, that's not where, that's not, that's not where they want to be at. They put too much resources into that. And the primary, the first guy that has to be talked about is Tobias. Tobias is having his worst year so far through 9 games in years. He's not playing well at all. He's, he's having his worst season in a, quite a while right now. He is shooting 16% on threes. 16%. He has shot, oh, I, we've talked about it a lot in the offseason. Over the last five years, this is a guy who's been a 37, 38% three-point shooter. He hasn't shot below 36% from three since 2016. Right now, he's shooting 16%. And what's even worse about it is where he's shooting so badly from. 53% of Tobias Harris's uh, threes are coming from the corner. Let me tell you what he shot from the corner over the last five years. 45%, 45, 45%, 44%, 36%, 40%, 40%. And then this year, he is shooting 15% on corner threes. Again, I'll let you know what he shot the previous years. 45, 44, 45, 36, 40, 40. This year, he's shooting 15%. There has been... Quite literally, at least eight attempts from the corners that Tobias has been that the team has generated for Tobias. That if he hits those shots, either it's a dagger, it puts the Pistons ahead late and kind of gives them a cushion, or flat out wins them the game. Like they've had all those opportunities, good looks for Tobias from the corner, and he is shooting fifteen percent. That you cannot have that. He is the Pistons' prized possession from this offseason. They spent twenty five million dollars going after him. Do I expect Tobias to be better? He has, he has been much better than this through the last five years. But he has not been good for the Detroit Pistons so far. They need him to be better. I expect him to be better. He is a veteran with a long history of being a lot better. So I expect him to get there. It's just a slow start, I'm going to believe. But that is contributing a ton to the fact that the Pistons haven't started out even hotter than what they should be. Because the defense allows them to be a lot better right now. And Tobias is one of the main reasons they're not. I expect him to get better, but he is one of the main reasons why it's not. But he's not the only one. The next person I want to get to, Simone Fontecchio, who played really well with the Detroit Pistons late last year when he was acquired in a trade, has been... How do I... I don't think it's disrespectful. Like, he's been flat out bad to start this year. Nine nine games so far, he's shooting 34% from the floor, 31% from deep. He's, He's not shooting well from beyond the arc. He's not doing nearly as much attacking closeouts as he did last year. He seems to be trying to figure out his role. He's dribbling into the areas that he shouldn't be trying to do. He's forcing some things off the dribble, and that's not really his game. But primarily, the fact that he went from shooting 43% from three for the Detroit Pistons last year in those 16 games to now 31% is absolutely killing them. Absolutely killing them. Again, this is a team that's 13th in defensive rating. You got big improvements from Cade and Ivy. They're thriving together. You're outscoring teams when those guys are on the floor together. The only reason why they are not six and three, five and four. One of the biggest reason is these guys are shooting vastly, vastly below their career averages. Tobias is at 16%. Simone is at 31% from deep. You can't, they're not going to win games like this. They put too much resources into their shooting. To be better for this to be the case. It can't happen. Can't happen. And I want to be honest with you guys. I don't expect their defensive rating to be very good throughout the year. I, I, I until JB, if JB can keep this going throughout the whole year, that would, that would be possibly one of the best coaching jobs I've seen in the last 10 years from the Pistons. Because this is not a good defensive roster. So I expect them to regress to the mean a little bit eventually defensively. And when that happens, they need their offense to go back to where it needs to be. It, which should be around middle of the pack. 
and it starts with Tobias shooting better and Simone Fantecchio shooting better than 31% from deep. But again, he's not the only one because Malik Beasley is also shooting career lows. He's also shooting badly through the first nine games. He is shooting 33% from deep, which is his worst shooting since the first uh, year of his career. Again, this is a guy over the last four years who has shot 40, 37, 36, 41 percent from deep on a lot of volume. He's keeping the volume up. He's getting the shots up, but he is shooting 33 percent from the from deep. He's shooting 32 percent from from the floor overall. He's shooting 30 percent on twos. Like, I, I, it's it's really right. That it's as simple as that. Cade and Ivy are doing their thing. Their supporting players that the Pistons went out and put their offseason resources into are not showing up. If I would have told you before the year the only player who would be showing up and doing their part from the guys that they went out and get was Tim Hardaway Jr., I don't think any of you guys would have believed me. There was a lot of people, majority of the fan base, that did not think that, to buy, or that Tim Hardaway Jr. would be a consistent player in the rotation. And so far, he's been easily their best veteran. Easily. The only guy that showed up and played well offensively. If these guys were playing at what they the Pistons signed them for, what they've done throughout their entire careers, the Pistons would be much better right now. But until they do, they're going to struggle offensively, especially when one of Cater Ivy come off the floor because they're not making defenses pay for collapsing on them. Malik Beasley, Tobias Harris, Simone Fontecchio, the Detroit Pistons need you guys to be a lot better. They need you to be the players you've been throughout your entire careers so they can have a lot better of a year. We could already be seeing that happen right now, but they haven't shown up. Do I expect all of them to continue playing like this? No. They have, outside Simone, too long of careers of them playing much better than this for me to think this is going to sustain. But, man, this has been a rough start to the year. They, this has been rough. This has really hurt the Pistons how badly they've started to the year. They need to get better and need to turn it around quickly. I mean quickly. So, they just need those guys to be better, man. That's what's holding the Pistons back right now. It's not Cade. It's not Ivy. It's not even, like, to a lesser extent, to a lesser extent, it's not even Jalen Durham's defense. It's, it's, it's by far the, the shooting of the veterans and the play of the veterans so far. They need to be better. Let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. How you guys feel about this? Do you guys agree, disagree? Who do you think needs to be better for the Detroit Pistons to be, you know, closer to 500, be above 500? Again, let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. When we come back, I want to give a quick preview of their upcoming game against the Atlanta Hawks. When I found out Skims was making underwear for men, I have to admit I was pretty excited. My girlfriend has been buying Skims for a while now and is always raving about how comfortable their underwear is, so I know that they were going to come through with their men's underwear. I feel like at this point I've tried every boxer brief in the game, but nothing ever fits just right. I think we finally have a winner, though, guys. Skims came out with their Con 5-inch boxer brief and honestly puts other brands to shame. They hit right at the thigh and stay there. That's the key. They don't move around. They don't back out. They don't give you that 5 p.m. wedgie. If you're a boxer brief guy like me, this is the one. Shop Skims Men's at skims.com. Let them know that we sent you after you place your order. Select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. And if you're looking for the perfect gift for the whole family, Skims just launched their biggest holiday shop ever. Also available at skims.com. And again, make sure you let them know that we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and select our show, Locked on Pistons, in the drop down menu that follow. Shop Skims Men's at skims.com. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free to be on podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review or whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Again, subscribe to all the Locked On Pistons daily newsletter. Text the number 313-914-6528 if you want to be part of our Insiders program. I think you guys would really enjoy it. Um, and also, make sure you guys subscribe to my personal YouTube channel over at Kuka Hill. We will be having film breakdowns coming soon. This has been an extremely hectic week for me, and I just got to create some free time, but it's coming soon. I appreciate everyone who already has one over there and tried to support me. I, I really do appreciate you guys. Um, but let's go ahead and preview the Pistons game against the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, this is a game the Pistons have to win. I'm going to call it flatly. They have to beat the Atlanta Hawks. I talked about it two episodes, three episodes ago. The Detroit Pistons' November schedule is their softest part of the schedule. They have to be able to get wins and win a lot during this month. They already have wins 
over the Brooklyn Nets. They had wins over the Los Angeles Lakers, and they should have beaten the Charlotte Hornets. That's going to be a heartbreaking loss. It's to me it was the worst loss of the year because they're not an Eastern Conference contender. This is not a championship level team. This is a team that's supposed to be on your level, and the game was right there for you. I personally felt like the Pistons never really felt threatened, which is why I've seen some Pistons fans say that it felt like they kind of were just walking through the emotions and not giving much effort. It, it, me watching it kind of felt like the Pistons were somewhat playing with their food and didn't really, I, I guess, it just felt like watching they weren't really threatened by the Hornets until real late in that game. I, that's at least what I saw. And despite that, they had to lead with six seconds and just couldn't box out. You can't lose that game. You can't. You have to win that game. Now this is another game against Atlanta that they have to win. Atlanta is a team on their same level. You're playing them at home. You have to win this game. Are people expecting you to defeat the Milwaukee Bucks? No. Who they play on November 13th. Are people expecting you to go out there and defeat um, the, the 76ers if Embiid and Maxi are back on the 30th of November? No. And there's some other tougher games that the Pistons have still. Like November 29th, they play the Indiana Pacers. Um, uh, this Sunday, they play the Rockets. Who The hope is for Pistons fans is that they're in that same tier of uh, team as the Rockets. But the Rockets have been better. Not unbeatable, uh, unbeatable games, not like a contender or anything, but a better team. That's a tougher game. And then you get the Heat on November 12th. So they do have a lot of games amongst teams who are, have the same record as them so far this year, who are in their ballpark, but they still have some like tougher games, which is why these games matter so much. You have to win these ones, or you will find yourself buried quickly. I, I mean, you want to win some games that you're not supposed to win, They haven't been able to do that outside the Lakers game so far this year. They had opportunity. But if you're not going to do that, then you have to win the games that you're basically even at. Or you think that you're around their uh, level or simply better. Pistons, no, the Pistons feel like they are a better team than the Hornets. The players, the the coaches, the front office, they think they're better than the Hornets, which is why that one hurts so much. I guarantee you they also think that they're better than the Atlanta Hawks. So they have to win win this game. Um, There's a few matchups, though, that I'm really looking forward to. One... I'm really interested to see how they attack Trey Young. I think Trey Young is going to be switched on the Cade quite a bit. You're going to see them run that action um, where the, the ball will be on the left wing. You'll see Cade at the at the top of the key. He'll cut through, set a down screen for someone on the left block. It will be Trey Young's defender, or whoever Trey Young's defending will be on that left block. They will set a screen on ball screen. It'll probably be Jay and Ivy and Cade. It'll be a guard on guard screen. Jay and Ivy will fly up uh, off the pin down. They'll switch across the board, which is what all teams have been doing, and then they'll give the ball to Kane and let him dominate Trey Young in the post. I'm going to assume we'll see that action a ton in this game. Whether it's that action, whether it's the action that they run guard on guard at the high post that gets Cade the mismatch of a point guard on him, they definitely are going to do this against Atlanta. I'm interested to see how Atlanta tries to guard this. Do they just concede getting Trey Young on Cade? And if so, it should be a big-time game for Cade. Cade should dominate that. Um... So I'm interested to see how they do that. The other thing is Jalen Johnson could be a problem for the Pistons if their veterans don't show up. Jalen Johnson, their uh, the Atlanta Hawks young player, has been freaking fantastic this year. He he has been really good, especially lately for them. I want let me get his exact numbers up for you. Um, but he's been really good for for the Atlanta Hawks, and he's a potential matchup problem. He's averaging 19 points a game, 10.6 rebounds, shooting 45 percent from the field. Over his last three games, 29 points, 20 points, 23 points, 60% shooting, 55% shooting, one game of 35% shooting. But he's been really good for them. Good two-way player. Plays really well. He's been extremely good for the for the Hawks. Um, and that's a guy who I think could be a matchup problem um, for the Pistons if guys like Tobias and Simone don't play well versus them. So those are the two matches I'm looking for. How do the Hawks try to avoid getting Trey on, the Pist- on K Cunningham? And how do the Pistons counter that if they don't just concede that matchup? A lot, a lot of times, at least when we've played, I've seen the Pistons play the Hawks. They they just concede the switch a lot of times. Um, but if they don't do that, how do they get him in favorable matchups for the Pistons? And then how do the Pistons counter Jalen Johnson's play? Because he's been really good for them on the wing, six nine player, young guy playing really well. How do they counter that? So those are the two matchups I'm looking for. Outside of that. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. It's been available on all your podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel, my personal YouTube channel, at Kooky Hill. 
Subscribe to LockdownDaily.com for the Lockdown Pistons Daily Newsletter. Subscribe to the Insiders Program or Lockdown Pistons Insiders Program. Um, but outside of that, stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully the Pistons can get this win against the Atlanta Hawks. They have to win this game. This is one of those games they have to be able to win at home. We'll see how they do. Till next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there. Till next time, peace out.